All right, here we go. Welcome to my story review of Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition. First off, a spoiler warning. This review will discuss major plot points, so if you're like me and this remaster is your first time playing through Chrono Cross, you've been warned. Now, I've thought a lot about how exactly to tackle this rather large, complex topic, and this is how we're going to proceed. I'm going to try to quickly summarize the major plot points and then move on to my thoughts on them as this video is meant to be a critique and personal thoughts on the story. Also, I will assume that you are at least familiar with the major events of Chrono Trigger, as the events of Chrono Cross can't be discussed without discussing these preceding events from the first game. So let's get started. The story in Chrono Cross really focuses on consequences. The consequences of the manipulation of time for one's own benefit and the consequences of using an unnatural and dangerous power to do so. We could say that the story really begins in 65 million BC, when Lavos falls to the Earth and changes the course of the planet's history. The dominant species, the Reptites, are wiped out, and the humans fill the void left by the Reptites. During one of the lore dumps in the late game, it is suggested that humans were corrupted by Lavos and would henceforth be considered parasites to the planet, just like Lavos itself. But to me, I would say that the story really begins in 12,000 BC, with humans trying to harness a power they did not understand. You see, the events of 65 million BC could not be avoided. They were meant to occur, naturally. Lavos was a parasitic extraterrestrial life form just following its instincts. Nothing in the story of Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross that I've seen indicates Lavos chose to come to Earth. It just did. Earth happened to be on its path that it was traveling. Following this logic, we come to the humans of Zeal, and specifically the Queen of Zeal, being the reason for all the ills of the Chrono world, besides the actual awakening of Lavos in 1999. You see, it was her attempt to harness Lavos' power that destroyed Zeal, that sent Janus, aka Magus, to the Middle Ages to start a war between the mystics and the humans that trapped Shala in the darkness beyond time with Lavos, and that would charge Shala's pendant with Lavos' energy and thus cause the accident with Luca's transporter that would send Chrono and his friends on their journey across time in Chrono Trigger. In Chrono Cross, during this event in 12,000 BC, Lavos would draw Chronopolis and the sentient computer fate 10,000 years into the past, from 2400 AD to roughly 7600 BC, and the planet would draw an alternate world Dinopolis into the Prime World as a counterbalance to Chronopolis. A war would then ensue between Chronopolis and Dinopolis, which Chronopolis would eventually win thanks to fate and the frozen flame. The dragon god of Dinopolis would be split and sealed away. All of this because one human wanted more power. These events now set up the world of Chrono Cross, which takes place on an archipelago, which we can assume never existed during Chrono Trigger, yet it did, but it also didn't. This is where all the time travel and dimension hopping starts to make things weird. According to the story in Chrono Cross, Chronopolis would engage in a time experiment in 2400 AD using the Frozen Flame, which is a piece of Lavos that broke off and survived its encounter with Chrono in 1999. Again, a turn of events made possible by the Queen of Zeal long ago. Chronopolis itself only exists because Chrono and friends defeat Lavos in 1999, preventing the apocalypse. But this experiment goes terribly wrong, leading to the time crash. It is during this time that Lavos, in 12,000 BC, when he is wakened by the Queen of Zeal, sees the future in which it is destroyed and reaches through time to pull Chronopolis and the Frozen Flame back in time to essentially provide itself with a second chance. Also at this time, Shala somehow clones herself while being taken by Lavos in 12,000 BC and drops her baby clone in 1000 AD, where she is found and raised by Luca. This baby clone of Shala would be named Kit. Now we come to the next piece of this puzzle, Balthazar. Balthazar, the guru of reason from the Kingdom of Zeal, was sent to the year 2300 AD by Lavos during the events of 12,000 BC, 
In the original Apocalypse timeline, he was sent to a desolate and dying future, where he built his first time machine, the Epoch. However, in the new timeline, created by Chrono's victory over Lavos in 1999, Balthazar arrives in an advanced, thriving civilization where he begins researching time travel and builds Chronopolis. He and the researchers use an advanced AI called Fate to assist in the research and control the frozen flame. During this research, Balthazar discovers that a version of Lavos still exists in the darkness beyond time, fusing with Shala. If this fusion is allowed to complete, Lavos, or the Time Devourer, as it is now called, will destroy time itself. Upon this discovery and discovering that a clone of Shala exists, Balthazar builds a neo-epic and travels back to 1000 AD to oversee Project Kit. This project is an elaborate and complex plan built to ultimately lead Surge and Kid to destroy the Time Devourer and rescue Shala. Finally, the last bit of backstory that we learn about midway into the game is that Surge as a young child was severely injured and his father, Wazuki, and his father's friend, Miguel, set sail to find someone who could save him. During this voyage, a storm rose up on the sea and sent the party into the Sea of Eden, the secret location of Chronopolis, the Frozen Flame, and Fate. This storm temporarily deactivated Chronopolis' security, and Shala called out through time, by way of the Frozen Flame, to Wazuki, claiming she could save the young Surge. Wazuki took Surge to the Frozen Flame, and this event made Surge the Arbiter of the Flame, and locked Fate out of its access to the Flame, by way of the Prometheus Circuit. Fate became enraged by its loss of the flame's power, and somehow corrupted Wazuki, eventually turning him into an avatar of Fate. Fate would use Wazuki to later murder Surge, and thus allow Fate access to the Frozen Flame once more. This event would be reversed, however, when Balthazar sends Kid back in time to prevent Surge's murder, thus creating the paradox of alternate worlds we see and play through in the game. These two worlds are very different, yet similar. The biggest difference, though, is that in the world where Surge survives, known in the game as Homeworld, the Apocalypse timeline is somehow restored, and the Sea of Eden has become the Dead Sea, where time is frozen by fate. In the Dead Sea, rather than Chronopolis being pulled back in time, parts of the destroyed future are there instead. Now that we have all that said, we should be up to speed and we can now discuss the story. But first, if you're enjoying the video so far, please take a second to tap that like button so more people can find my content. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So, this story takes some time to process. I actually watched a few story recaps made by others here on YouTube to help me remember any bits I forgot or may have missed. There is just so much with alternate worlds and alternate timelines that it is hard to keep track of sometimes. It also doesn't help that the story is really told from the first-person perspective of Surge. This keeps us in the dark about a lot of what is going on, and even the nature of Chrono Cross's world itself. That all said, I think the developers were right to tell the story from this perspective. It makes the story much more personal, and I think helps invest the player in the fate, no pun intended, of Surge and Kid. I do think that the story starts off way too slow, though. We don't even learn about most of the ties to Chrono Trigger until the mid-game, and the biggest lore dumps don't even occur until the late game. This brings me to another issue, lore dumps. It is almost like the story writers realized at the end of the game that they had given up too little story to this point, and had to jam it all in at the last minute. I mean, you don't really even know what the ultimate goal of the game is until Balthazar magically shows up after the fight with the Time Devourer's avatar, it looks like the Dragon God, because Lavos already absorbed it. I still don't quite get that one. The point is, we don't really know any background until the last few hours of the game. I think the story could have been better with more, much smaller bits of information dished out throughout the game. Now while I might have criticism for how the story was told, the story itself was amazing. The way everything begins to intertwine with the events of Chrono Trigger in the mid-game had me excited to see how it would all come together in the end. I think that once you have some time to process the story, most of it will make perfect sense, at least as much as a story based on screwing up time and alternate realities can make sense. But I also like the moral the writers put behind the story. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, 
The human lust for power is what ultimately leads to all the terrible events of history in the Chrono world. And even the seemingly heroic and pure act of trying to save the future, by use of a power little understood, eventually leads to a worse future where time itself is eliminated. Ultimately, a turn from violence to harmony with each other and the world itself by use of the Chrono Cross is what leads to a peaceful and happy ending. Chrono Cross's story is truly unique and deep, and while it may be slow to get going, when it does finally bring all of its parts together, it brings us a truly epic tale that transcends time and space. If you made it this far, thank you for watching my story review of Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition. If you'd like to see my gameplay review, tap this video here. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.